Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be talking about how air suspension systems work. And I hopped on the phone with some FCA engineers, specifically some guys that were working on RAM products, uh, RAM vehicles, and so they were able to provide me all kinds of information about how these air suspension systems work, how they implement them differently throughout their product range and the advantages that they have. So this is going to be one of two videos because there was so much information. Uh, this one will be kind of more of a high level overview of air suspensions, and then I'll have a second later on. Uh, which will kind of dive deeper into some unique scenarios. So getting started, uh, what is an air suspension system? Well, essentially, uh, the most basic aspect of it is what you're doing is you're replacing, you know, steel springs or leaf springs uh, with an air spring. So these airbags are rubber membranes. Uh, it holds pressurized air, and that pressurized air is what your vehicle is riding on. So really, in the most basic form, you're just swapping out the springs uh, for air springs. Now there's some added uh, hardware that goes along with this. So here we're looking at an example frame um, and you're gonna have a reservoir, an air supply unit, basically an air compressor to supply air to the system. You're gonna have your air springs at each corner and then you'll have height sensors to monitor uh, the ride height at each corner as well. So that's a kind of a basic overview of the system. And you know, you're still gonna have your shock absorber, everything else like that. Really, you're just replacing that spring. Um, and of course, you'll have you know, air supply to each spring so you can adjust the pressure and the volume within that. So what are the different types of air springs? Well, we've got the convoluted air spring or we have the rolling lobe air spring, uh, both of which you can see used in RAM products. So for example, the convoluted they use in the rear suspension of the RAM 3500, uh, the rolling lobe they will use in the RAM 1500. And so the convoluted you can see here, it's kind of got that Michelin man look to it. Um, you'll see these common in the aftermarket. On um, this rolling lobe, you can kind of see the way it works. So as you add air, so each of these will have a port, you know, likely on top to add air into the system and as you add air into this you can see that that rubber membrane kind of rolls up uh, this pillar right here and so once it's fully uh, raised it will look something like that and when it's lowered down with less pressure it's going to come down like this. The benefit of a system like the rolling lobe, uh, it's a bit more tunable, um, but the convoluted gives you a bit better packaging. Uh, the distance between the axle and the frame is reduced versus using a rolling lobe system. Now another major differentiator for air suspension systems is whether they are open or closed systems. And both of these systems are going to be pulling in uh, outside air, however they're going to operate slightly differently. So you've got your air supply unit which is going to be pulling in air, your air compressor, and sending it to the reservoir. You could have it directly send air to the air spring if you wanted, but very likely you'll be filling a reservoir and then using the air in that reservoir uh, to supply air to the air spring whenever it's needed. And so that air passes along. Here in red we have the open system system and in green we have the closed system. So the open system it goes from the reservoir to the air spring and then when the air spring wants to release pressure it just releases it to the atmosphere versus in the closed system you can send that air pressure back and forth between the reservoir and the air spring. And this is a bit more modern of a system. There are some good advantages to using a closed uh, air spring system. Basically you're going to have faster response times, often it's going to be more efficient, and it's generally quieter. Uh, and I bring up uh, the noise level. You know, you may often hear this with like a city bus and as it comes to pick people up, it'll lower and you'll hear that air released as it lowers. That's an open system. Uh, not to be confused with the air brakes because as it comes to a stop you may hear it release pressure from the air brakes. And so finally, you know, what are some reasons why you would want to use an air suspension over, you know, alternative methods such as coil springs or leaf springs? Well, there are quite a bit of advantages that have to do with it having an adjustable ride height. So ingress and egress, getting in and out of the car, you know, you can lower it down, um, which is nice to be able to do, especially for tall trucks. Off-road use, uh, you know, you can change the ground clearance. So if you're going off-road, you can change the setting, raise up your vehicle, you'll have more ground clearance, uh, higher approach angle, higher departure angle, higher breakover angles. So significant uh, improvement when you go off-road to be able to raise up the vehicle. Also for aerodynamic benefits, so you can lower the vehicle. Uh, this is something the Ram 1500 does. It'll automatically lower down if you have the air suspension uh, while you're driving on the highway uh, to reduce drag and get better fuel economy. And then uh, finally here, with adjustable ride height, one of the things is load leveling. So if you have steel springs and you put a ton of weight into the truck bed, well obviously that truck bed is going to sag down because of the weight. If you have air springs, it can automatically rise to a targeted ride height once you put that weight in. So it'll come down and then it'll realize, you know, the system has been lowered with these height sensors and it'll increase air pressure to raise that truck bed up. 
Another benefit of air suspension systems is improved ride quality, and this is kind of a byproduct of how the system behaves, because as you increase payload, the system increases pressure to maintain a set ride height. By increasing the pressure, it increases the spring rate. Now doing this maintains a fairly constant ride frequency, which means the truck will feel pretty much the same from a comfort standpoint, regardless of how much weight it's carrying. In this scenario, the volume within the airbag remains constant, while the pressure increases with the added load. Now, as far as disadvantages, the most major thing uh, that comes to mind is cost. Um, basically, it's going to be an expensive option to add on, and if the system were to be damaged, it could be more expensive than simply replacing a steel spring uh, when you do have to go in and replace items if they are to be damaged. So, thank you all for watching, and if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Hello everyone and welcome. In this video I'm going to be explaining magnetic ride suspensions. Now the purpose of magnetic ride suspensions is to be able to actively control the damping force of your suspension. So, how does it do that? Well, most of the action all occurs within the shock absorber itself. So here we've got our uh, strut or our coilover, shock 